Hey there folks, Scottsdale Travel Chick Sidekick here to tell you about a few of the things you should see and do on a weekend trip to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. But before we get going on all the sights and things to do, just a little bit about Pittsburgh itself. Pittsburgh is the largest city in western Pennsylvania and has had a long history as a major American industrial town from America's early beginnings all the way up through the 1970s. After that, many of the steel mills and other plants in the area closed and there were some hard times for Pittsburgh in the late 80s through the early 2000s. You can still see remnants of Pittsburgh's past all over the city. But today, the city is recreating itself into a major medical and tech-focused hub, and there is now lots of growth and energy happening once again. The Pittsburgh metro area is about 2.5 million people, and it's centered around the confluence of three rivers, the Allegheny River, the Monongahela River, which then combine right in downtown Pittsburgh to form the Ohio River. Fun fact, did you know that Pittsburgh boasts over 400 bridges, with 15 major ones crossing the rivers just in the downtown peninsula area. The downtown area is quite moderate in size and it's easy to get around by walking, biking, or by Uber. In this video, we'll aim to cover the primary sites you'd want to consider checking out on a two or three day weekend trip to Pittsburgh. First, we're going to recommend you take some type of tour to give you some perspective on the city and its history. We'll talk about the tour we took, and then we'll give you some quick overviews on all the sites you might want to explore from there, starting with a ride up an incline. You can't really do Pittsburgh without taking in an incline up Mount Washington and taking in the views. After that, we'll talk about the many park and river options you had to choose from, and then all the museums. You'll certainly have to pick and choose from our list as you won't have time to hit them all. Finally, we'll cover three nightlife and culture areas you won't want to miss. Okay, let's get going. For our guided tours, we always like to take a bike. You can cover more ground than walking, and it's fun. We took a very nice tour with the folks at Bike the Berg. During their tour, you'll learn about Pittsburgh history from the downtown to the North Shore and the Strip area. They'll give you a great base of information on Pittsburgh and some ideas on what to do next. Try to figure out how many troops were there, if they had cannons or not. When he got there, he decided he was going to attack the French, failed miserably, lost half his men, got captured and spent a year in prison in, in Canada. During the tour, you'll hear a lot about the history of downtown and its buildings. And separately, you can walk into many and explore their unique architecture, like this one where we had breakfast. It's called the Speckled Egg. But I thought one of the most unique areas was this modern headquarters for PPG. Who's PPG? That stands for Pittsburgh Plate Glass. And naturally, all the buildings were made entirely of glass. This is the PPG headquarters. A bunch of little buildings. In the winter, this is an ice skating rink. And that's a Christmas tree, that pillar. All of this is glass. And then the main headquarters is here. After the downtown area, you'll ride out to the river and then up along a number of historic bridges. You'll next come to the strip area, which is centered around one street with many ethnic dining options and souvenir and trinket shops. During good weather, they almost always have some type of farmer's market and entertainment going on. It's definitely worth a stop, and this is one of our nightlife areas we'll talk about later. Then it's back down along the river to learn some more as we head towards the old Heinz plant. We have this, this layer of older buildings that didn't get real tall because they may not have had air conditioning or elevators. And then you have the big modern new buildings, but they're not closer to the rivers. The rivers were all taken up, they were built downtown. Then we stopped at the original Heinz plant on the north side, originally opened in 1890. You may know Heinz for their ketchup, mustard, A1 steak sauce, and their original Heinz 57 sauce. 
Interesting fact, did you know that Henry Hines was the first in the world to do factory tours starting back in 1899? The plant closed after more than 110 years in operations and this area is now being converted to apartments and upscale lofts. From there, we head further along the North Shore to see PNC Park where the Pirates play, Heinz Field where the Steelers play, and the Carnegie Science Center. Then finally, after all that, we head back across the river to Point Park to hear about the original history of the Pittsburgh area, Fort Pitt, and how the British and French fought bitterly over this key Three Rivers area. After you get a feel for things on the bike tour, it's time to put your walking shoes on and check off some more sights around town. But be sure to be nice, as it's required all day, every day, just like the signs tell you. Okay, let's start checking off some sights. Pittsburgh is famous for its inclines on Mount Washington. At one point in the past, there were as many as 15 inclines in the city, but two remain today. We decided to do the Duquesne Incline, which is furthest to the west and gives the best views of downtown. A bit of history about this incline. It was completed in 1877 and was originally steam powered. It is one half mile long and runs at a 30 degree incline up Mount Washington. Its original cost to build at the time was $47,000. All right, so we're getting on this thing. I'm gonna ride it up there. What's this feel like, babe? Super smooth. Yeah, it looks good. Feel like it. For a very small fee, you can also see the engine room, if that's what it's called, where you can see the innards of how the incline works. It's definitely worth the 50 cents for the little extra piece of history. All right, where are we going now? We're going to go down with the hoisting machine on the this. This thing, okay. Yep. Let's go then. Something might start happening here. There it goes. And then this goes through there. into here and then those go and turn these things which we'll right up above is the track which is there there's a viewing platform at the top but the primary destination once you get there is Point of View Park about a quarter mile to the west there you have some great views back over the river to downtown Pittsburgh, and there's also a popular picture spot with a sculpture of George Washington facing off against the local Seneca Indian leader, Gaya Sutta. Next up on the to-do list are parks and paths. There are a lot of options I could cover here, but I wouldn't be able to do them all justice. So I'll pick my five and give you my brief thoughts on each. As you can see, they're the Riverfront Paths and Gap Trail, the Stadium Area, Point Park, Frick Park, and Snelly Park. Bike Pass. First and foremost, get out and walk some of the Riverfront Paths. Overall, these are called the Three Rivers Heritage Trail, 
and there are 33 total miles running along the various riverfronts and giving you access to many of the neighborhoods, business districts, and local attractions. And if that weren't enough, there's also a famous multi-state rail to trail which starts in downtown Pittsburgh. It's called the Gap or the Great Allegheny Passage Trail. It's a huge 335 mile trail running from Pittsburgh through West Virginia and Maryland to Washington DC. But you don't have to do the whole thing. You can do a couple sections nearest Pittsburgh and simply catch the Amtrak train back into town when you're done. Okay, so it's not really a park, but the north side around the stadiums kind of has that feeling with a lot of open space to explore and it has a popular fountain here called Water Steps, which is a great place to hang out in the summertime. Next up is Point Park at the tip of downtown Pittsburgh in the confluence of the Three Rivers. The original 1760 Fort Pitt is here, as well as the large Point Fountain. There's a lot of history between the British, French, and Indians related to this little piece of land, so be sure to read up on that too. But this is kind of a tourist, one-of-a-kind place right downtown, so probably should be on your list in the end. Frick Park. It's the largest park in the city and has a lot of things to do like birding, tennis, hiking, and more. There's a pretty cool Frick Environmental Center here, as well as the Frick Museum and Original Estate right next door. They're both worth checking out. Shenley Park. It's another large 456-acre park originally created in 1889. It's most famous for its huge conservatory, which is also worth checking out. And there's also a carousel for kids and a really nice place to eat in the park called The Porch. Now, how about some museums? Well, museums aren't really our thing, so we're going to make this section quick. There are actually quite a few museums in Pittsburgh. There's the Carnegie Science Center, the Carnegie Natural History and Art Museum. There's the Heinz History Center, focused on American history with a Pennsylvania slant. There's the Frick Museum, which are actually multiple museum places spread over five acres. They're all worth seeing if you have a specific interest in any of them, but we didn't go to any. But I'll tell you about the two museums we did go to. One is somewhat famous, or at least the person was, and the other I'm pretty sure you've never heard of. They are the Andy Warhol Museum and Bicycle Heaven Museum. The Andy Warhol Museum is seven floors dedicated to Andy Warhol. Fun fact, this museum is the largest in North America dedicated to a single artist. It was an interesting couple of hours for those who like Andy. We made a separate video just in this museum, so if you're into it, please click the link below to learn more about Andy Warhol in this museum. Bet you didn't know that Pittsburgh has the largest bicycle museum in the entire world. Neither did I, but we stumbled upon it and it was great. It contains over 5,000 bikes and is a mix between a messy bike shop, a bike museum, and a trip back to your youth absolutely check it out if you were born in the 60s, 70s, or 80s and loved bikes. We created a separate video dedicated to this place too, so click the link below if you want to learn more. Finally, a few tips on the nightlife and culture. Keep in mind Pittsburgh ain't exactly New York City, but there are definitely a few places worth checking out. First up is the Strip. It has some nightlife, but it's mainly known as a daytime hangout with live music on the weekends and a number of local eats places. The area is pretty famous in Pittsburgh, so you owe it to yourself to check things out. Just for fun, we hit up Primonti's while here and had their famous Pittsburgh. All right, babe, so what'd you get? <laughs> this is the Pramonti uh, burger and cheese. It's so Pittsburgher. It's called a Pittsburgher. Well, oh yeah, we're at Pramonti. Anyway, it's called Pittsburgher, so it has tomatoes, 
coleslaw, provolone cheese, and fries inside one sandwich. So I'm going to show you what this is. Or are you going to eat it? This is. Can you fit that in your mouth? No. Oh my gosh. See all the french fries. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> are we going to be able to finish it? No. Pamela's Diner is also here, and it's famous because Obama had breakfast here. I guess it was so good that he even flew the staff out to the White House to make them breakfast again. Next is Southside Flats. This is Pittsburgh's premier nightlife area. It has the largest concentration of bars, restaurants, and nightclubs in the city. Most of the activities here are centered around Carson Street. Finally, if you want to keep things to the downtown area, then Market Square is your best bet. It's not as expansive as the south side, but it has a number of options centered around the square, as well as the adjacent theater district just next door. Well, there you have it. Our thoughts on what to do with a weekend in Pittsburgh. Hope you enjoyed our video. If you did, please give us a thumbs up. Until next time, see you later.